to a new episode by Flyboys Aviation. Today's episode is about the history of Fokker aircraft. Whilst having an unfortunate name for the English-speaking world, they definitely have a place in aviation history. Let me take you back more than 100 years to the very beginnings. Anthony Fokker made his first aircraft in 1910, called the Spider. Although he was a Dutchman, he founded the company Fokker in Germany in 1912. His timing couldn't have been better as World War I was about to break out. The Fokker Eindecker he supplied to the German Air Force was extremely successful and reigned supreme over Europe's battlefields. It was not until the introduction of newer French and British designs that this supremacy ended. Later aircraft such as the iconic triplane flown by Manfred von Richthofen were also successful. After the Treaty of Versailles, Anthony Fokker returned to the Netherlands. In 1919 he founded the company again. He had managed to gain an export license for airplanes and supplies and therefore didn't have to start from scratch. The 1920s and 30s were the most successful years for Fokker. The Fokker Tri-Motor that was introduced in 1925 was sold to 54 airlines around the world and had a whopping 60% of the American market in 1936. Pioneering aviators such as Richard Byrd and Charles Kingsford Smith also used the Fokker Tri-Motor in their travels. The 1931 crash of one of the types somewhat harmed the reputation of Fokker in the United States. The introduction of all-metal aircraft such as the Ford Tri-Motor, Boeing 247 and Douglas DC-2 ended its dominance. After World War II, Fokker had difficulties. The market was flooded with a surplus of ex-military aircraft that could now be used for commercial aviation. They had some success in supplying trainer aircraft and manufacturing aircraft under license such as the Gloucester Meteor. It was not until 1958 that they introduced an all-new commercial aircraft design, the Fokker 27. It was a huge success. Their first jet-powered commercial airliner, the Fokker 28, was a modest success as well. In the late 60s they signed up with German aircraft manufacturer VFW and produced the VFW 164, which was a commercial disaster. They also set up a modest space division that became quite successful and later became a standalone corporation. Further work was secured during the 70s and 80s by building the F-16 Fighting Falcon under license. During that same time Fokker developed the Fokker 50 and Fokker 100. They were the successors to the Fokker 27 and 28. The development costs spiraled out of control and they had to be bailed out by the Dutch government in 1987. Initial sales of the two new models were good, especially the Fokker 100. It later had strong competition from the American manufacturers. The shortened Fokker 70 that was launched in 1991 was only a moderate success. During the final decades of its existence, Fokker had been searching for a suitable partner. In 1992 they signed up for a partnership with Deutsche Aerospace. When their parent company Daimler-Benz decided to focus on their core business of building cars, it cut ties with Fokker. When talks with Bombardier fell through, they were declared bankrupt in March of 1996. Nowadays most airlines have retired their Fokkers, although quite a few of them are still flying around. This is a testimony to their build quality and the craftsmanship of the people who work there. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. On my channel you will find a new video every week that delves deeper into the fascinating world of aviation and offers you new insights. See you around.